Welcome to Click. I'm Spencer Kelly. If you do any kind of computing on the go, you'll know how convenient a laptop can be. But while laptops are technically portable, they are still reasonably bulky. Well, over the last three years, it's become obvious that the industry has been working on the idea of shrinking a traditional laptop to something that's even more portable and even easier to just sling in a bag. We've seen the rise and fall of both ultra-mobile PCs and mobile internet devices. Neither of these form factors has taken off. But since 2007, it seems that the industry has hit on a winning form factor. And it's called the netbook. It was the charitable One Laptop Per Child project which set the idea of lightweight mobile computing alight in the public imagination. But canny commercial enterprises started wondering whether, as well as children in the developing world, developed countries too couldn't benefit. Taiwanese PC maker Asus was the first to realise this, taking the market by storm with the oddly named EPC. In their first year, the Asus netbooks flew off the shelves, bucking the recession with increasing sales, whilst their bigger brothers, the laptop and desktop PC sales, dropped off. Since then, every PC maker and his dog has jumped on the netbook bandwagon, and these are some of the latest models to hit the shelves. The idea is simple, literally simple. We consumers don't actually want high-end gamer-grade laptops. Instead, we're craving lightweight devices which do just what we need on the move, things like word processing and web surfing. And netbooks are perfect for that, eschewing high-performance processors in favour of components which weigh less, use less battery power and, possibly most importantly in these tough economic times, cost less. But having made a splash in the media, have netbooks abandoned their lowly roots? After being conceived as a way to get cheap, efficient, robust computers to kids in the developing world, they seem to have caught on more with more affluent users, happy to pay a bit more for improved style, even smaller form factors, better specs such as touchscreens and near full-size keyboards, and even daring to run the more demanding Windows Vista. But Nate Langson from technology website CNET UK told me you still can't expect too much from a tiny, low-powered device. One of the biggest limitations involves multitasking, so in terms of having a web browser open with multiple tabs and having a, a media player open, having an, an instant messaging client, a laptop normally would be able to manage those things quite well. On a netbook, you might not be able to run all of those things at one time. We've got two examples of very different netbooks here. This is this is the kind of standard size. Then we've got this, the Sony P series. P, I think, must stand for pencil tin. What actually limits the size of a good netbook, in your opinion? One of the biggest things is keyboard size. Netbooks almost always have a slightly smaller keyboard. One of the things with the Sony P is that it doesn't have a trackpad. So the little um, trackpad for moving the, the cursor around is on this, a little ball in the middle. You don't have a, you don't have a trackpad for scrolling around with. That's one of the biggest limitations, definitely. And the other thing is, is screen size. You will always find a netbook is sort of around 10 inches or lower. Um, once it passes 10 inches and starts getting into 11 and 12 inches, is it really a netbook anymore? Not really. The other thing that's going to be compromised, of course, as you say, is storage. You've got two types of technology, a hard drive or a solid state drive. What should people bear in mind? Well, if you're going for a solid state drive, the amount of space you've got for storing information, files and photos, things like that, is a lot smaller, significantly smaller. Once you've got uh, three or four programs installed, a few hundred photos, maybe a little bit of music, that's about all you're going to get. The advantages of solid state drives over hard drives? Uh, speed, power efficiency, and they're much more robust in terms of the fact that there's nothing actually moving in them. So if you drop them with a hard drive, there are things spinning that could be damaged. With a solid state drive, it's just a chip. If your computer contains low-power, lightweight components, it would make sense to run an operating system which is itself simple and lightweight. And that was the thinking behind the special, optimised version of Linux which shipped with the first generation of netbooks. It seemed, though, that most people preferred the familiarity of Microsoft's Windows, and that's XP, not the bulkier Vista. XP is now the netbook OS of choice. 
And now an announcement from Google, which has made substantial tech headlines, although whether they're justified remains to be seen. The web giant has said that in the second half of 2010, it will launch a simple, fast-booting, web-centric operating system called Chrome OS, designed with low-power devices like netbooks in mind. There's been uh, a lot of talk over the last few years that Microsoft could find that its big competitor is not Apple, but is actually Google as the world moves online. And I guess if we look back, Google has been developing a lot of rival applications to things you would normally run on the desktop. So maybe this is the next logical step. That's right. I mean, up until now, the competition has largely been coming from, uh, from Linux. Uh, because that's what's been running on a lot of netbooks. So on Chrome's OS, you're going to be looking at a, a netbook operating system that boots very, very quickly within a few seconds, gets you checking your email very, very quickly and browsing the web, things like that. It's not going to be running Microsoft Office. It's not going to be running Windows Media Player or anything like that. And surely they have to build in a lot of offline storage because we are not yet anywhere near a world where we're permanently online. Yeah, I mean, I think they're hoping that most of it's going to be done on the web and certainly that's what netbooks were sort of built for. In, in a way, um, but Google also has this uh, this plugin called Gears, which is where it lets a web browser store offline content. There is going to have to be some kind of hardware storage inside for saving files because people will want to move files from a from a desktop environment to another computer. And they're also going to lose connection every so often, at which yeah. point you can't lose your entire computer's operating system. That's right. If all of your stuff is solely online and then you go on a train, where is it? You're stuck. Do you think realistically? We have a future where a Google operating system pushes the 90% market share that Microsoft ha has way down? No, I, I don't think so. And I think the problem that, that we've had so far is that uh, Linux has been largely replaced on netbooks now by Windows XP. And so one of the problems is that people don't have the familiarity with Linux as they do with, with Windows. They buy a Linux PC or a Linux netbook. They think, I don't know what's going on on this. I don't know. I can't install my applications get XP on there and so and I think we're going to see a similar issue with Google's Chrome OS as we have with Linux and that it may be installed by default but people might not want it when they realize hey this isn't what I'm used to okay Nate thank you very much for your time if you have a netbook or you're considering getting one we've got a few tips and tricks in a few seconds that may enhance your netbook experience So today we've been talking about netbooks. And while these low power machines really are designed for simple tasks, you may still find that the small screen size and restricted memory really can hamper some of the common tasks that you want to do. Fortunately, there are some applications out there which can help you squeeze the most out of your little beast. And here's an essential guide to our pick. Screen real estate is a valuable commodity, especially on tiny screened netbooks. Well, 360 Desktop is an application that drastically increases your available space. You can now drop your running programs anywhere in the picture. To get to a program, simply click on the tab on the taskbar or point the mouse to the left or the right of the screen to scroll through the panorama. As well as being free, this big screen app thankfully nibbles a tiny amount of memory, weighing in at a diminutive 33 meg. Another way to maximize screen space is to resize the icons or tools in a web browser. Less space gobbled up by screen furniture means more screen space to browse. That's exactly what the cunning Little Fox theme does. For use with the Firefox browser and light washing delicates at 95 degrees, Little Fox shrinks menu and toolbars. Now, netbooks are designed to be small and ultra-portable, but when you're trying to squeeze everything into a tiny space, something has to give. And it's often the keyboard size or the mouse pad that suffer, which in return can make navigation a bit painful. Well, Rocket Dock is a tiny app which can eliminate quite a few mouse clicks. This smooth, animated dock is a clean and slick way to navigate through desktop items. Just drag and drop icons into it and then lock it to any side of the screen. And it only eats up 6.2 meg, as healthy as eating fruit with dinner. Did someone say apple? Hope that helps. Now, we're always looking for new things to cover in our essential guides, so if there's something technically technological that you'd like some tech tips on, tell us. Email click at bbc.co.uk.